Okay, just to recap here, I'm trying to find my eigenspaces for this matrix capital A right here so that I can diagonalize the matrix capital A. And I was just starting to look at lambda equals 1, and I need to find this null space of A minus lambda I. I cross off a row. I'm doing my little trick where I swap the two entries, and I'm going to multiply through by 10. Uh, you know, if you have an eigenvector, remember it forms a whole eigenspace. Any multiple of an eigenvector is another eigenvector because it's closed under scalar multiplication. Right? Eigenspaces, they are subspaces. They are closed under addition and scalar multiplication. So if I find, if I have the vector 0.1 and 0.2, I can multiply that by 10 and I'll get another eigenvector. So just to get rid of the decimals, I'm just going to multiply by 10 and write down the vector 1, 2. All right? We have another eigenvalue, which was 0.7. For that one, I have to take the null space of the matrix I get by subtracting 0.7 from the main diagonal of the matrix. This is what I'll get. I need to cross off any row I want. I'll cross off the second row. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the trick where I swap the entries and I'm going to multiply through by 10. And I have to put a minus sign on one of them and I'll just put the minus sign on the first entry. Okay? So there you go. So what I can do now with this information is I can build my matrix S and my matrix D. Okay, so remember how that works. We just put the eigenvectors into the columns. I'm going to, just to be consistent with my notes, I'm going to put them in this order. These two eigenvectors into these two columns, and then my diagonal entries have to be corresponding to those two eigenvectors. So it would look just like that. So the point now would be that A, remember the formula, a is equal to S, D, S inverse. Which means that if I want to take a large power of A, it's the same thing as putting a large power of D in the middle. Right? So um, that's kind of the idea I showed you earlier. So you're going to get S right here. A large power of D is going to be this matrix, right? 0.7, when you raise it to a huge power, becomes 0. 1 to any power is still 1. And then S inverse, okay, this is the inverse of a 2 by 2, which you do have to work out. I'm going to save you the grief of doing that and just tell you the answer. Negative 2 thirds and 1 third, and then 1 third and 1 third. Okay? That's what you have right there. And if you now just multiply that all out, I'm going to tell you what you get here, guys. You get one-third, one-third, and then on the bottom row, you get two-thirds, two-thirds. Okay? This is a large power of A. So what is the distribution of students at time infinity? Well, it's this power of A, this infinite power of A. I'll write it down here. One-third, one-third, two-thirds, two-thirds times whatever the initial rosters look like. Let's say we start on day zero with an initial uh, roster of A0 and B0, right? Well, if you multiply this out, what you're going to get, guys, is one-third of A0 plus B0 and two-thirds of A0 plus B0. In other words, of the total students in both sections combined, one-third of them end up in Professor A's class, and two-thirds end up in Professor B's class. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because Professor A was losing 20% of his students, twice as many, as Professor B. Professor B was only losing 10% of his students. So it's sort of a two-to-one ratio. This is precisely a two-to-one distribution of students at the end of the semester. So This is a Markov process. It's a great application of diagonalizing a matrix. And I just wanted to share it with you because I want you to know that there are important applications of having a diagonalizable matrix. In other words, a non-defective matrix. Okay.
Now, non-defective is a good thing because it has these great applications. Being an invertible matrix is also a good thing, if you remember way back when. Invertible is good, non-defective is good, but they're not the same thing. So I have a group work that you're going to be working on in class and that I want you to think carefully about that asks you to create examples. An example of a matrix that's invertible but not diagonalizable or diagonalizable but not invertible. Um, to show that even though they're both good things, they are, they are not the same concept. They are not related to each other really in any way whatsoever. In giving examples, just to say a quick word about giving examples here. When you're giving examples, of course the best size matrix to use is a two by two, right? And Let's say you want to create an example that has a certain set of eigenvalues. What I want you to remember, when you're finding the eigenvalues, you're solving this equation, right? This characteristic equation. It's a determinant. You probably remember that determinants are easy to find when your matrix is upper triangular or lower triangular. So let's say you wanted to make a matrix that has eigenvalues of 2 and 7. What you would want to do would be to make a matrix that has a 2 here and a 7 here and some other number here, it doesn't matter what number that is, but a 0 in the lower right corner. Because what's the, when you, as soon as you subtract lambda from that, right, the determinant of A, if this is A, the determinant of A minus lambda I now is going to be, well, it's going to be 2 minus lambda times 7 minus lambda, and then minus 0. Okay, and when you set that equal to 0, you're going to get lambda equals 2 and 7. So you can, you can make matrices that have the eigenvalues that you want them to have. For example, if you want to make a defective matrix, a 2 by 2 defective matrix, a good way to do that is to put the same number you need, it, you need to have a repeated lambda, right? You have to have the same lambda showing up twice. So something like 4 and 4, that would be a great way to do it. Okay? Um, so so that's, that's just a little tip about creating matrices that have certain eigenvalues. Um, let's see. I already told you the fun fact about the product of the lambdas equaling the determinant of the matrix. So let's say you want to have a matrix that is invertible. You probably remember that an invertible matrix is supposed to have a non-zero determinant. Well, that just means that your eigenvalues have to be all non-zero. If you have a lambda of zero, then your matrix is going to be, de is going to be not invertible. right? If, if one of these lambdas equals zero, then the determinant is zero. The matrix is not invertible then. Okay. So use that to think about using, in the context of a two by two matrix, focus on using upper triangular matrices to try to create situations where you have a matrix that is invertible but not diagonalizable or vice versa. Okay, those are the sorts of things that you're going to investigate a little bit in a group work activity. Creating matrices that have certain lambdas that you want. Okay, so it's very different than most of the problems where I give you a matrix and I ask you for the eigenspaces, I ask you to diagonalize it, right, those kinds of questions. This is a very different kind of more creative problem where I'm saying I want you to make a matrix that has certain properties with respect to diagonalization. So, hope that this has been helpful. Um, again, you can certainly contact me and ask questions. Uh, as always, I love talking about this stuff, and I'll be glad to do, to do what I can to clear things up. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Take care.